Shalom and blessings from the Elisha Calling. Here today on Picking Up the Mantle, we're going to share a beautiful word with you that I feel is a now word from the Lord for this season that we are in. It's a word that deals with our covenant with God, and it's a word of blessing, but it's also a word of that's going to bring some responsibility. So we want to welcome you to this episode of Picking Up the Mantle. Be sure to stick around to the end for a beautiful promise from the Lord. But let's start right off today and let's dive right into the Word of God. So we're going to start off today in 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. And it says, And Elisha saw it, and he cried out, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and its horsemen. So he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and tore them into two pieces. Verse 13, he also took up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan. Next week, with the help of the Holy Spirit, we're going to dig into verse number 12 because there's something very important that Elisha had to do at the moment that he saw his spiritual father taken up into heaven. With the help of the Holy Spirit, next week we're going to touch on that topic of what it was he had to do. But this week, I feel led from the Holy Spirit to focus on verse 13. It says, He took up the mantle of Elisha that had fallen. He took up that mantle that had fallen from him. In this season, it is important that all of us understand that the Lord is placing a mantle before each one of us. Now, Elisha, when he saw that mantle laying there, he had a choice to make. Now, his spiritual father was just taken from him. The man that he walked side by side with for many years was just taken from him. And there he was, out in the middle of this area, all by himself, and he was now faced with the responsibility of carrying on that ministry that Elijah had. So Elisha was in the middle of grieving. He was in the middle of loss. He was in the middle of a difficult situation. And there in front of him lay that mantle. Elisha had a choice to make. Was he going to pick up that mantle and receive with it all that went with it? Or was he just going to leave that mantle there and walk on and go about his life? You see, that's a choice that every single one of us in this season need to make. We are in the, all of us are in the middle of a difficult situation. No matter what people say, COVID is still there. I believe, hopefully, with the help of the Holy Spirit, with the help of the Lord, we're, we're starting to move past that, but I don't feel we're there yet. So I believe COVID is still a very real thing that we need to be aware of. We're seeing violence increase around the nations. We're seeing tensions between nations begin to increase. We're seeing increase of lack in, in people's lives, a lack of food, a lack of, of provision. So we can see that we are all being affected in some way by a situation that is uncomfortable. Maybe we don't like this situation. It's the same situation Elisha was in. He was in a challenging situation, but he made the choice to pick up that mantle. You see, he had asked Elijah for a double portion of the same anointing that was on Elijah. And Elijah told him, hey, listen, if you see me when I'm taken away, then it's going to happen. You'll get that double anointing. But there was a condition that God put on that. Elisha had to be willing to pick up that mantle. He had to be willing to take up everything that went with that mantle. And Elisha made that choice. He chose to take up that mantle. Yes, it brought an anointing. Yes, it brought blessing. Yes, it brought authority. But there's something else that that mantle also brought that we need to be careful of in this season and we need to be aware of. So, as I stated earlier, Elisha walked with Elijah. He walked with him for years. We all know that when you read 1 Kings chapter 19, 18 and 19, you know how Jezebel came against Elijah. 
how she put a threat upon his life, how Jezebel was seeking to destroy all the prophets of God. Elisha, I imagine, had sat down many times at a dinner table with Elijah, and Elijah shared that story with him. Not only that, Jezebel was still in the land. She was still influencing and putting forth her influence over the people. She has not been done away with yet. At this point, she was still a prominent figure in the land of Israel. She wasn't dealt with until years later when Jehu rose up as king and threw her down, had her thrown down and trampled her. So she was still a big influence. So when Elisha saw that mantle laying there and he saw the potential for God's blessing in his life, he also had to understand that came, that came with that mantle was another burden. And that's a burden to suffer the persecution that would be coming to his life. You see, Jezebel hated the prophets. She sought to destroy the prophets. She sought to destroy Elijah. When Elisha took up that mantle, he had to be aware that she would potentially come after him as well. But that did not stop him from picking up that mantle. He pushed past that fear. He pushed past whatever intimidation was trying to come upon him. And he stood firm in the promise that God gave him through Elijah that said, well, if you see me when I'm taken, then it shall be so. You shall receive that anointing. Elijah, Elisha had to let go of the fear. He had to let go of the potential of being persecuted or even killed. He had to be willing to stand up for what he believed in from the Lord, even in the midst of potential persecution. And that's what all of us need to do in this season. All of us need to be willing to pick up the mantle of God's calling in this season. Even though we may suffer intense persecution, even though we may suffer intense attacks from the adversary, we need to be certain that God will be with us if we pick up that mantle. Now, it's easy to pick up that mantle and receive the anointing. It's easy to pick up that mantle and receive the authority. It's easy to pick up that mantle and walk in the blessings. But it is not so easy to pick up that mantle knowing that potential persecution awaits you, knowing that you are now potentially exposing yourself to our adversary Satan who would seek to come after you and come after your finances and come after your family. But I want to give you hope today. Picking up that mantle, even in the midst of all of that, brings beautiful blessings. And we'll look at those blessings here in a little bit. But first, you need to look at a second point when we pick up that mantle. You see, I believe that as a church, we are in a very critical point in the church as a whole. Our nations are at a critical point. We are at a turning point, and we need to make sure that we are in alignment with what God is doing. You know, over the past years, ever since this COVID broke out, we have seen many people, many believers, who have suddenly turned away from the faith. We've seen major um, uh, names, uh, high-profile names in the ministry, in the churches, all of a sudden turn away from God and say, you know what, I don't believe in Jesus anymore. They were not able to withstand the trial by fire. When we pick up that mantle, we need to understand that with it comes a trial by fire. We need to understand that God will test our works because it's easy to stand firm in our faith. It's easy to, to preach the word or it's easy to, 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 to share our faith and, and, and be happy and joyful when things are going good, when there's no problems in our lives. But it's something completely different to be able to stand firm in our faith when, quite frankly, and forgive my words, when all hell is breaking loose. When those times come, when that trial by fire comes, we need to be willing and able, in the help of the Holy Spirit, 
to stay firm in our faith, knowing that God will be with us because he is a God of covenant. Come with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 13. And this is from the New Testament. This isn't Old Testament. This isn't before Jesus. This is after Jesus, okay? Understand that this is a word to the church, that Apostle Paul was speaking to the church. He says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 13, each one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. There will be a time at the end when Jesus Christ comes back for his church the second time. Make no mistake, he is coming back a second time. He's coming back, I think, I think sooner than most people tend to believe or want to think about. Now, I'm not going to tell you it's next week, next year, 10 years, 20 years. I don't know when. Could be 100 years from now or what? I don't know. But there will be a point when Jesus Christ will return for his second time, when Yeshua will come for his bride. And at that moment, all of us will stand before God and God will break out the books in heaven, the books of remembrance, and he will see, okay, what did you do for my kingdom? How did you promote my name? What is it that, how did you, well, did you do what I called you to do? And each one of us will have our works tried by the fire of his word. But as a church right now, we are all under a trial by fire. COVID, the violence, the persecution, these are all trials by fire that if we will accept it and we will allow it, will help purify our lives and will help us to be made stronger in the Lord. Because when the Lord brings us through it, he makes us stronger for it. So I believe that right now, each one of us, the church, we are all being tested by fire. How well will your work that you do for the Lord stand up under that trial? Are we willing to go through that trial by fire? I believe Elisha was willing. He had seen the persecution that came against the prophets. He had seen the trouble that Jezebel brought into the life of Elijah. And he knew that as soon as he picked up that mantle, that same trials, those same persecution, that same fire was coming to his life. And the Lord was going to test him to see how well he did with what God was calling him to do. So that mantle that the Lord is laying before us, I believe that it is an end time mantle. I believe in with everything that I have that it is a mantle of covenant and revival. I believe that the Lord is putting that mantle before every single one of us. But I also believe that that mantle, when we decide to pick it up, will not only bring the authority, will not only bring the, the protection, will not only bring the provision, to do the work that God has called us to do, but it will also bring with it a trial by fire. The Lord is trying his church by fire right now. All of us need to allow the fire of the Lord to test us in this season and to test everything that we do, everything we say needs to be tested by the fire of God, by the fire of his word. His word is that fire that will purify us, that will set us apart. It is the, the fire of His Word and His Holy Spirit that will purify our hearts and our minds so that we speak only what He tells us to speak, that we will do what He tells us to do, and that we would not do the things that the world is telling us to do. I firmly believe that in this season that the Lord is looking for people who are willing to pick up that mantle. But we need to understand the burden that comes with that mantle. We need to understand that persecutions will come, not so that we can be filled with fear or intimidation, but so that we can be prepared by seeking Holy Spirit more and more every day. We need to prepare now by reading the Word of God. We need to prepare now by spending times in, in prayer and worship in the secret place with God. 
I know in this season, in my own life, in my own ministry, the Lord has been calling me to, to new times set apart to just worship Him, to just be in His presence, to put on some prophetic worship and just pray in the Spirit and pray in tongues, just believing that He is taking me into His presence. And people of God, those times have been such a blessing. And the Lord is looking for covenant people that are willing to pick up that mantle in this season so that we can be prepared. And I believe that if you are willing to pick up that mantle, there is a beautiful blessing coming. Because you see, it's a mantle of covenant. It is a mantle that will provide everything that you need to be able to fulfill what God is calling you to do. It is a mantle of identity that will identify you as someone who is willing to accept all that the Lord has. You see, that mantle is also a mantle that will show the spiritual realm, the powers and the principalities that are operating in this season. It will show them that you are God's. But not only that, that God fights for you in the midst of everything. So I want to leave you with a promise today. It's a beautiful, beautiful promise, and it comes from Daniel chapter 3, verse 25. You see, Daniel had three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were all in captivity in Babylon, and the king of Babylon made a decree that at a certain time of day, the sound would go out across the land and people had to bow down to a golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar had made. And anyone who did not bow down to that idol, they were going to be thrown into a furnace of fire. But look what happens here. Daniel chapter 3 verse 25. Look, he answered. I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. You see, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were not willing to compromise their faith in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They were not willing to compromise their faith to the God of Abraham, to Yeshua. They were not willing to bow down to that false idol. They were not willing to let go and compromise their faith just to please man. That is what we need to be in this season. We need to be like, like um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We need to be so bold in our faith that we are not willing to compromise the word of God for the sake of pleasing any one man or any family member. Because this promise stands if we are willing to do that. Look at this promise. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they faced persecution because they were not willing to bow down. The fire came to their lives. But look what happened as those three were thrown into the fire. Daniel was not with them at this moment. It was just Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But when they were thrown in, look what happened. The king himself said, look, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they are not hurt. And the fourth, the form of the fourth is like the son of God. People of God, if you are willing in this season to pick up that mantle that God has for you, Yes, persecution will come. Yes, trials by fire will come. But look at this beautiful promise from Daniel for your life. That in the midst of that fire, you will not suffer harm. In the midst of that fire, you will be with God. You see that fourth person, that fourth form that was like the Son of God, it's no coincidence that it was put in the Bible in this form. That was Yeshua. Yeshua himself was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the middle of that fire. The Lord himself came into the midst of the fire. Notice that he did not take them out of the fire. He joined them in the middle of the fire. People of God, 
you are going to suffer trials by fire. Make no mistake. This COVID is a trial by fire across all the world. Make no mistake. The fire will come. But if you are willing to pick up that mantle, did you know when you read earlier, the king ordered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to be bound with their own clothes. And it even specifically says their outer garment. Do you know what the outer garment of a Jewish man was in that time? It was his tallit. It represented God with him. It represented their identity. That was the garment that Elisha picked up that had fallen from Elijah. It was his tallit, his mantle. It was that mantle. Even though that mantle was used to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, it was that garment that protected them in the fire. Because it says they were loosed. People of God, you in this season may try, the adversary Satan may try to bind you with your faith. But don't worry, because it's your faith that is going to be with you in the midst of that fire that's going to call the attention of Yeshua, and he will join you in the midst of that fire. And he's going to loose you from the whatever bonds that the enemy tries to put upon you. He will loose you from whatever depression, oppression, lack, whatever it is. He will loose you from that. And he will deliver you. Now Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of that fire. And their testimony of how God was with them in that fire was a testimony to the king, and the king glorified God for it. You see, sometimes when the trials of fire come to our lives, yeah, we may suffer a little bit, we may be persecuted, we may suffer loss, whatever. But when we are willing to pick up that mantle and God is with us in the midst of that fire, the reason God didn't take them out of that fire is because he wanted to show the king, he wanted to show all of those that were in Babylon, that God himself was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And it brought glory and honor to the name of Yahweh. It brought glory and honor to the name of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yeshua. You see, sometimes your trials aren't necessarily for you. Yes, God will use them. He will purify you. He will, he will transform you in that fire. But a lot of times, the trials and the tribulations that we all face, as long as we remain faithful to God in the midst of them, will be a testimony to all of those who may not know him. So I want to pray with you today, and I want to pray that that mantle of holiness, that mantle of repentance, that mantle of purity will come to your life in the midst of the fires, and that that mantle will become a testimony of God's mercy and goodness in your life in the midst of the fire, and that many could be saved through your testimony. So Father, I lift up each person watching this video today. Father, each person receiving this word today. Father, may you put upon them, Lord, that desire to pick up that mantle. And Father, as they pick up that mantle that you are laying before them, Father, may your anointing, may your authority be upon them. But Father, also, may your coverage and your protection be over them. Father, in the midst of the fiery trials, Lord, Father, may you be with each one of them, Lord. Father, may your presence be with them. Father, I pray right now for each person, Lord, that in the midst of the trial that they're going through, may they come to understand who you are. And I feel in my spirit there's someone watching this today and you are going through a fiery challenge. You are going through a fiery trial right now. The Lord would tell you today, be encouraged because he is with you. Don't be concerned about the fire. Take your focus off the fire for just a moment and put your focus on him. And I, and I see this person right now just falling down in worship in their, in their, in their prayer room, in their, in their home or in their bedroom. And I just see this person just crying out. You may not even know how to worship the Lord right now. 
Just find some worship and play worship music. It's very easy nowadays on YouTube. Just type worship music and push play. Push on that video. Worship the Lord. And in the midst of that, he will reveal himself to you. So Father, I pray for that person right now. And the Lord's showing me it's not just one. There's many people right now. You're facing a trial. All you need to do is worship the Lord in the midst of that trial, and he will reveal himself to you. So, Father, I extend hands right now, and I pray for every person, Lord. Father, who is going through this trial of fire right now, I pray, Father, that they would come to the revelation of who you are in your life. Father, reveal yourself to them, Father. Lord, reveal yourself to them in a personal way. Father, reassure them in this season. Lord, I speak over them the reassurance of your Holy Spirit in this season. And Father, right now, Lord, just as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were loosed of their bonds, Father, I pray for every person right now who is suffering under the bondage of the adversary of Satan. They are suffering under the bondage of oppression and depression. Maybe they're suffering under the bond, maybe you're suffering under the bondage of lack. Well, in the name of Yeshua, I order those bonds to be loosed off your life now in the name of Jesus. I declare every bondage that the adversary, that maybe, maybe it's a bondage of Babylon, I order those bonds to loose you now in Jesus' name. We take those bonds off of you in the name of Jesus. I declare freedom over, the li over your life right now in Jesus' name. If you suffer from depression, if you're going through oppression right now, I want you to renounce to that in the name of Jesus. Say, I renounce depression. I renounce to the oppression right now in Jesus' mighty name. You know, as long as you are a believer in Jesus Christ, as long as you have accepted him in your life, you have that authority to order it off of your life. So take that authority now and say, in the name of Jesus, I order that depression to loose me now. I order that oppression, loose me now in Jesus' mighty name. And Father, I pray for each person who is suffering lack and loss in this season. Father, I pray that as they pick up that mantle that you have laid before them, Father, that, Lord, you, you, Lord, would provide all that they need. Lord, you are our provider. Lord, you pr promise the provision of your Holy Spirit. So, Father, I pray right now for that person who is suffering that loss right now. Father, that person who needs consolation right now, I pray in the name of Yeshua that you send your Holy Spirit to bring consolation and comfort. Father, we thank you that in this season, Lord, you are looking for people to pick up a mantle. Father, may each one of us pick up that mantle. Forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for our pride. Forgive us for our fear. Forgive us, Lord, for waiting until now to pick up that mantle. And there's people that are hearing this Maybe you're not hearing it today live. Maybe you're watching this sometime in the future. It doesn't matter. The word of God continues to go forth. But right now, the Lord, the Lord is showing me that there are people watching this, that the Lord has placed a mantle before you. The Lord has placed a ministry call, a purpose, a plan in front of you. But because of ABC reason, for whatever reason, you have not picked up that mantle yet. The Lord wants me to tell you, that it is not too late for you to pick up that mantle. It is not too late for you. If you're hearing this word today, it is not too late. The Lord is looking for you to pick up that mantle. And as soon as you take that step of faith, just like Elisha did, Elisha had to pick it up before that anointing came. He had to pick up that mantle. And I believe that as you are willing to take that step of faith and pick up that mantle, the Lord is going to release his anointing. So, Father, I pray for each one of those people right now. I pray for my brother, my sister right now, that, Lord, they have not been able to. They have not been willing to pick it up yet. But, Father, I believe your word is touching them at this moment. And, Father, you are going to pour out what they need as they move in faith to pick up that mantle. 
So Father, I bless your people today. Father, we give you all the praise and glory. And Father, may you, Lord, be glorified in each of their lives. Now, may the eyes of your understanding be enlightened so that you may know the hope of his calling in your life. Shalom and blessings from the Elisha calling and this portion of picking up the mantle. God bless and amen.